trade agreement. Well, welcome back to All Out Politics, and we can go uh, now live to you. that uh, uh, press conference the by the European uh, Research Group of Conservative uh, MPs uh, and peers, uh, putting forward their ideas uh, for uh, how the Northern Ireland issue, uh, issue uh, on the border can be got round a paper this morning from David Lilly. Speaking at the moment, uh, the former Brexit Secretary, or one of the former Brexit Secretaries, David Davis. Not just sports, ones like America as well, who've had a much more successful record. Uh, and so for them, the customs barrier around the European Union, the common external tariff barrier, was not, uh, not a problem. Uh, and this is also true, I think, just looking through the document uh, at what uh, on page 12, I think it is, that the, uh, that the uh, uh, costs and problems of uh, crossing a customs custom system. I mean, custom systems in the last 20, 30 years have got faster and faster, more and more efficient, cheaper and cheaper. Hardly surprising. Your mobile phone today works much better than it did 20 years ago, and so does your custom system. And this is, this is, this is an answer, not just to the technical economic problems, but to the political problems. The answer to the Northern Ireland issue, which you heard the ERG talk about a few weeks ago, uh, is similarly straightforward uh, as uh, you're seeing in here with respect to other customs issues. So this paper goes right to the heart of two of the largest problems that the government imagines it sees in the deal with the European Union. It will deal with Northern Ireland and it will deal with the primary friction, if there is a friction, uh, in, in our trade. And what it shows very, very clearly is there are practical answers to the issues uh, of leaving the European Union, which do not require us to give up our sovereignty, do not require us to give up our freedom, do not require us to stay inside the customs union forever, but actually allow us to be a free country once more. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's now some time for questions, but the message that you must have heard so clearly this morning is that there is another way. And that's really important because there's been this feeling that all that can be done is what the government is suggesting. There's nothing else. It's this way or no way. But actually, there is a well thought through, practical, and already available set of systems uh, that could be used. And I think that's the key message from these great experts who are dealing with these matters on a daily basis. So thank you for listening to that, and I'm now very happy to open it up to questions, uh, if there are any. Um, so who's going to go first? You want me to go to the BBC first? Well, thank you for a very direct and straightforward question. Uh, the ERG does not have a collective view, as I've always made clear, and people will come to their own decisions on leadership. But actually what we're seeing from the government is a deliberate decision not to deliver a proper Brexit, but we have a government led by Remainers that want to keep us tied in to the European Union as tightly as possible. Uh, the Prime Minister, in her statement on Friday afternoon, said this was the deal she had always wanted, and the deal that she's got is not a proper Brexit. So that's the thing to bear in mind. Uh, as, as for letters, <coughs> patience is a virtue, virtue is a grace, etc. We shall see where the letters come in due time, and there's a meaningful vote as well, and we'll see what happens with that uh, to a government that seems to have alienated its uh, confidence in supply partners. Um, however, I'm going to try and keep questions for the rest of the panel rather than for me. If anyone has questions for me, we can go to those perhaps privately afterwards. Please. If I may, Paul Bradford, from ITV News. One of the news to respond, one of the Mr Davis. Um, David Davis, it looks as if the Prime Minister is coming up with a compromise on the Irish tax, which has been discussing with colleagues like uh, Ian Duncan Smith, doing some of the technologies that you wanted to use when you were Brexit Secretary. If he does bring forward that kind of compromise, would you be interested and would it persuade you to back the deal? And Mr. Rees-Mogg, if I may, 
aren't you the ones now lacking the confidence of your colleagues? The longer you go with that quality of letters, the less credibility your coup has. Right, yeah, that's good. Um, well, firstly, I hope you're right about, shall I stand? I hope you're right uh, about the compromise on the Northern border, because that is a material movement forward, uh, and so I hope that's what happens. But it isn't by itself enough. There's also the question of regulatory compliance as well, and that is very important to our future businesses. It's, you know, we are likely to be in the lead in things like artificial intelligence, genetics, and so on. We cannot be a world leader in those industries if somebody else writes the regulations for us. Uh, similarly, it is not just the Northern Ireland border issue that determines when we get out of the customs union. It is also the question of the customs arrangements, the so-called future customs arrangements that the government proposed. Many people think, and Hans may want to talk about this, uh, many people think this is either impossible or take five or ten years to put in place. That is also unacceptable. So it's, a great, it's great news if you're right that, uh, that the Prime Minister is willing to move on the Northern Ireland issue, as I'd hoped she'd done some time ago, uh, but I also want to see a move on other fundamental ones too. Well, indeed, um, as I mentioned, these existing systems can be used ready, they're ready to be used. Um, I gave witness to the uh, House of Commons, and I said there that within the transition period, so end of 2020, we can have all these customs formalities up and running. That's no problem, but we should start today. Um, thank you. Uh, one of your colleagues sitting also in the front row knows that coup is entirely the wrong word. Um, indeed, it's a rather silly word, because what I have done and what others have done is use the democratic process within the Conservative Party to say we have no confidence in the leader of the Conservative Party. This is not an illegitimate process, it's one set out in the rules. And this type of um, language, this over-egged language, is rather damaging to political debate because it tries to see things uh, in terms that are not realistic and not true. It is just like a general election in a way. That is a legitimate means of changing leader. And using legitimate means is completely proper. And people will then make their decision. Do 47 want to come with me or not? Now, I may find that they don't. Or that they don't do it today, but they do it when we get the meaningful vote. That is a decision for them. In politics, you have to set out your stall. You have to say what you believe in. And you then see whether people agree with you or not. Fortunately, in a democracy, it is not given to insist that people follow you, and that is one of the great virtues of our um, system. I'd better come to the other kumanga uh, sitting in the front row. I'm going to talk to Davis about before I do, James, please not be like this, I'll ask you as you can say more honestly last week to say that you were staying at Kuma against Theresa May, certainly not to tea, but do not have more of the sort of the dash answer about it. I've always admired Captain Mannering. Um, David Davies. So I didn't hear the question. No, I'm now going to ask you. I was going to say, yes. Yeah, so, so. Um, so David Davies, is very late in the day, has been putting forward some of the details. Is it your hope that if Parliament votes down this deal, Parliament will then return with this sort of idea and embrace this sort of idea? Well, you say it's late in the day. Uh, August before last, I guess what? 14, 15 months ago, uh, I, was, I signed off a policy report on future customs arrangements and on Northern Ireland. And actually they covered many of the issues that this report leads to. What this report does is knock down the arguments against, uh, against the, what was called MaxFact, the accelerated uh, um, uh, customs arrangements, and knocks down the arguments against having a, a practical and sensible arrangement in Northern Ireland. So it's not that late in the day. Yes, I do. Uh, hope that once we, uh, once uh, Parliament turns down the current proposal, we return to these sensible proposals. Do you want me to... Yes, um, I would hope that if Parliament turns down what the government is proposing, then they will go back to the EU and say, can we take up the offer you made on the 7th of March and negotiate on that basis, as long as it covers the whole United Kingdom. They will either say yes or no. If yes, good. It can be done very briefly. Free trade deals normally take a long time because countries start with 10,000 different tariffs 
and 10,000 different regulations, and they have to equate them. We start, with, you know, have to get rid of 10,000 tariffs and get them down to zero. We start with zero tariffs, we want to end up with zero tariffs, that can't take more than 10 minutes. The other thing that is required is equating or rendering equivalent your regulations and removing those which are an obstacle to trade. We start with identical regulations. That can't take very long. The main thing, therefore, is to negotiate an agreement as to what happens if one or other side changes their regulations. That exists in Canada and other type deals. That uh, is more complicated, but doesn't take a huge time. So it could be done in the time available. If not, we leave on World Trade Organization terms, and then we're in a much stronger position, actually, to negotiate such a deal with the EU, just as Canada was on WTO terms when it negotiated its deal with the EU. Better to do it before, but if not, try and do it afterwards. Uh, we better go to the Telegraph, who've been very silent so far. Mr. Uh, what would it take to withdraw your, le your letter? Would it take adopting this report? And David Davis, have you put your letter in yet? Um. I'm sorry, those questions have nothing to do with today's report, but I will answer any questions anybody has on other matters uh, later on. So would you like to ask a question about the report, or shall well, I go to... This report was adopted by the government. Lucky enough to the ERG to turn down the rhetoric and, and move on. The Prime Minister said yesterday that what she said is what she said, and she's not going to change it. So I think that's too hypothetical, unless David you uh, like I, that. I think we are in uh, a house of God. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth than over 99 just men who have no need of repentance. So let us hope that everybody coalesces on a sensible view. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm Andrew Alpine, Lisa, just a few of the three small points. If you fail to get the number of exits, and it looks as if you have, is the plan now to come back at the time of the meaningful vote? If you do, won't that be too late? Um, I refer to the answer I gave to the Telegraph a moment ago. If, 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 anyone, if anyone wants to talk to me about other matters, I'll talk to them later. Let's stick to the report here. Um, any other? Any, uh, uh, no. Uh, no. Well, we'll come back to you later. Um, uh, we'll have people who want to ask questions about the report. Anyone want to ask a question about the report? Yes, please. I refer you to the answer I gave to Channel 5 News and to the Telegraph. No. Right. Um, any more? Yes, please. Well, I, I mean, it's a question. What world does we not get the deal that we have negotiated in Canada and Canada and Canada and Canada and Canada and Canada Sorry, speak a bit more slowly. Say again. Sorry. You write in Canada that we could get the deal that well, uh, that news conference there from uh, the uh, Conservative uh, European Research Group uh, well, members uh, arguing that they do have the answer through technology to uh, the Northern Ireland border conundrum. 